It's a fusion night with chicken euro boats. Hey everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. It's a fusion night tonight. We're having chicken euro boats, which combines the flavors of the Mediterranean in the vehicle of Tex-Mex food. This is a great way to introduce someone to the clean flavors of Mediterranean and Greek cuisine while still being familiar and comforting. As always, the ingredients list is on the screen and the full recipe can be found at the channel's website, homestylecookingwithjen.com. If you're enjoying this video so far, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. It really does help out the channel with the algorithm and if you enjoy recipe videos, I post multiple times a week, so hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell so you never miss a new video. And if you have any food related questions or would like to see a specific recipe made on the channel, leave me a comment down below. I read all of the comments and I'll get back to as many as I can. Who knows, you may be featured on a future video. The newest addition to the channel is the super thanks button. If you would like to support us in making better videos, go ahead and hit the heart with the dollar sign inside and if you leave your name, I'll shout you out on my next video. A big thanks in advance and now on to the regular scheduled programming. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is preheat our oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 165 degrees Celsius. Next, we need to start preparing our vegetables. Now, I will warn you, there's very little cooking in this recipe, but there is a whole lot of chopping. What you've been seeing me do on the screen is peel my cucumber. Now, we are going to use the whole cucumber, but we're using half in the tzatziki sauce and half in the cucumber salsa. So I will chop the whole thing and divide it into two different bowls just to make my life easier. There's no sense of chopping half and then coming back and chopping the other half. It's easier just to do it all at once. Now that the cucumber is peeled, it is time to chop it up. I start by docking both ends and then I'll cut it in half. I'll set one half to the side and the other half I'll split down the middle, slicing it in half again. Then I will slice the cucumber into strips and I try to get them as close to even as possible, but we're not looking for perfection. Then I just run my knife through it and I'll do this with the rest of the cucumber. So I'll stop talking and speed this up a little bit so we can get on to the next vegetable. This time I decided to only cut half the cucumber so we can move on to making the tzatziki sauce. All right, it's time to add our yogurt to our cucumbers. I just usually buy one of the single serve Greek yogurts in the grocery store. This time I got Chobani, but Yoplait or any other brand works just as fine as long as it's plain and Greek yogurt. Now we need our parsley for our tzatziki sauce. You guys have probably seen me chop parsley a thousand times by now, but basically all I do is run my knife through it until it resembles mowed grass. That's the best way I can explain what the final result should look like. Also today I'm using curly parsley. You can use flat leaf parsley. It really doesn't matter. This is just what they happen to have uh, when I went to the grocery store. And now it's time for the garlic. I usually try to get fresh bulbs of garlic, but they're still looking sketchy in the grocery store. So I've substituted using this jarred minced garlic. It seems to be just fine. I can't tell the difference in the flavor profile. So it's always a good option if you don't want to chop garlic. And as always, add salt and pepper to taste. Everybody's taste buds are different, so just add the amount that is best for you. And lastly, it's time for the lemon. I roll my lemon on the cutting board and then then squeeze it cut side towards my hand. The rolling allows me to get more juice out of the lemon than normal and putting the lemon cut side towards my hand helps me catch the seeds so they don't fall into my food. Now it's time to just mix everything up and if you have depth perception problems like I do you've probably picked a bowl that's too small. I do it all the time. Just be careful and fold your mixture until everything is well combined and the yogurt has coated all of the cucumbers and the parsley is well incorporated. I just throw a lid on the Tupperware dish and throw it in the refrigerator until I need it again. Now it's time to make the cucumber salsa and we start with the cucumber again. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up since you've already seen me cut the cucumber so we can get on to the next vegetable. Thank you. 
Next, we need to add the red onion, and mine this time is ginormous. I'm only going to use less than half of it, really, probably about a quarter. So what I do to chop my onion is I dock both ends and I cut it in half. This makes it easy for me to get the papery outside off. Then I run my knife horizontally through the onion about three quarters of the way through. And because this one's so big, I had to turn it on its end so I could see what I was doing. Then I do the same thing vertically. And then all I do is run my knife through it. It's the quickest way to get even chopped onion with as few tears as humanly possible. Now, when I reach the very end, all I do is turn it over on its side and run my knife through it. And there you have chopped onion. Since my onion was the size of a planet, I'm not going to use it all in my salsa, which is perfectly fine. But now I have chopped onion for something else. All I do is I put it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the refrigerator. It'll keep for probably about a week, two weeks. I'm not sure onions don't last that long in my house, but it's a good way to meal prep while cooking. I just took the papery outside off the other half of the onion and added it to the same storage bag and now I have half meal prepped onions. Once I put the onions in the bowl I usually give it a quick stir. One of the reasons for this is the next ingredient are my tomatoes and I want the onions and cucumbers well incorporated before I have to stir the tomatoes and they get all squished. And next we have the tomatoes. Now I know the recipe calls for grape tomatoes but I like the tomato medley box. I don't really know what they're called but they're different colors and sizes but they're they're all small and they have a good flavor so I put them in my salsa. We still need to cut them in quarters and it's a simple process. All you do is cut them in half one way, hold the two halves together, turn the tomato 90 degrees and cut them in half the other way and you've got four little tomato slices. I think these tomatoes are called something medleys. I'm not sure, but they're available in major grocery stores. I do highly recommend you give them a try. Since all you're doing is watching me slice tomatoes, I'm going to stop talking and speed this up a little bit so we can move on to the next step. Now that you've got all the tomatoes in the bowl, give the mixture another good stir. Be careful, you don't want to crush your tomatoes, but you do want them well incorporated in the onions and the cucumbers. And we're back to the parsley again. I'm just going to stop talking and speed this up since you've already seen me mow the grass once. We're almost done with our salsa. The only thing left is the lemon juice. Just give it a good squeeze and make sure you get as much as the juice out as humanly possible. Again, I like to put the cut side towards my hand so I don't have to deal with the lemon seeds. Give the mixture one good last stir. Make sure that all of the lemon juice and the parsley coats your vegetables. Take your time with this. There's no rush. We don't want clumps of parsley or, or the overbearing taste of lemon juice. We really want it well incorporated. Then set it aside until we need it again. If you want to add a little bit more authentic flavor, you can add caramala olives or pepperoncini peppers. It's really up to you and a matter of taste. Now it's time for the tortillas. You thought I forgot, didn't you? Well, I didn't. So line your baking dish with your tortilla boats. I accidentally got the mini boats this time, but either option works just as fine. The mini boats could be used while you're entertaining, maybe for a game night. Because of their size, they're easier to eat and a little less messy. But either way, just line your pan with your tortillas and pop them in the oven for between five to seven minutes. You want them golden but not crispy. While the tortillas are in the oven, it's time to prepare the chicken. Since this chicken is cooked through, I don't have to worry about getting a separate cutting board. And if you have issues watching someone break down a chicken, then you might want to skip ahead. Since this is a rotisserie chicken, it's pretty easy to break it down. It kind of just pulls apart. So I take off the legs and then remove the 
underside of the chicken breast. I also remove both the wings just by pulling them off. It's really not, doesn't require a knife. And I only use the chicken breast in my gyro boats. Don't worry, nothing's going to waste. The person I live with takes care of the legs and the wings for me. Now the, the chicken breast does require a little bit of knife work. I just take my fillet knife and cut along the breastbone and pull it apart. Again, because this is cooked all the way through and it's a rotisserie chicken, it doesn't take much at all. The key is to make sure that you get all of the little bones because that's the last thing you want to bite into. And once you get it all clean, it's time to dice up the chicken breasts. I usually grab myself a small bowl just to have something to put it in. I cut it lengthwise into as even a pieces as I possibly can. Oh, and I missed a bone. And then I run my knife through it again, making even dice. Take your time with this. Again, it's already cooked, so it's pretty easy to deal with. I like to keep as much of the skin on as I can, but if some of it sloughs off, I just toss it. I don't want to get just a mouthful of skin. But now we have diced chicken, and I'm going to stop talking and finish up the other breast. Then we can get on to assembly. Now it's time for assembly. Plating your gyro boats couldn't be any easier. Just place two or three on your favorite plate, add your chicken to the bottom of the gyro boat, then add some salsa and top with tzatziki sauce. If you want a little extra flavor, top your tzatziki sauce with some feta. It gives a great flavor and it makes it look even prettier. So that's it. I hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and as always, well fed.